In this video, we're going to talk about ping, which operates by sending Internet Control Message Protocol echo request packets to the target host and then waits for an ICMP response. Ping is typically used when you're trying to identify systems that are on a network. To test to make sure that ping is actually working, what I typically suggest is you target the system itself, and in this case we're going to use the loopback address, which is 127.0.0.1. We can see that it is sending packet requests, 64 bit bytes, and it is getting it back. So we know that it's working. Uh, to stop this, it will continue on forever, but to stop this you would hit Control C. That way we now know that ping is actually working. What I see a lot of times when people are trying the 1.100 uh, pen test live CD, they target 192.168.1.100 and they simply send a ping request. And what we see here is there's no response. If you don't get any response, except for under special conditions, it means that it's not receiving anything. So if we hit Control C, again, otherwise it'll just continue to run we see that 15 packets were transmitted, zero were received, we had 100% packet loss, and then there was a time spent sending all those packets. Most people at this point would assume that there is a network problem or that the live CD isn't online or something along those lines. That can be a bad assumption. And the reason why I say that is because system administrators will often disable ICMP echo requests in order to hide their systems from basically ping sweeps, which is exactly what we're trying to do. Let's try some other things with ping. One of the things that we can do, if you remember when we sent the initial ping, it would just continue to run. We can limit exactly how many ping requests we're going to send out. In this case, I'm going to use the dash C and limit it to 5 and then our target, which will be, in this case, the Hackerdemia disk, which is located at 192.168.1.123. What we should get is five packets sent, and then it stops. As you can see, that worked. That saves some time and headache. Uh, otherwise, it will just continue to run and run. Another thing that we can do, we can indicate the size of the packets to send. In this case, we're going to use the dash S flag, and I will make the packet size 2000. Now, it's going to be actually a little bit larger than 2000. It adds an additional 8 bytes for uh, the rest of the, the packet before it sends it out. But we're going to add 2000 in this case. So again, we're going to target 192.168.1.123. And now again, it will continue to go since we didn't do the dash C or the count flag. Uh, in order to stop it, we'll just hit Control C. Now we, I can, I, we can see that 11 packets were transmitted, 11 were received, and then of course no packets were lost and how long it took to do it. And then it also talks about the average time for transmission. One other flag I wanted to show you before we get into some of the cooler things is the dash Q which forces it to be quiet on the output. In other words, we won't see anything other than the start of ping. We still have to do the control C in order to stop ping because we didn't, again, use the dash C flag. So we'll do a control C and see what our results are. We've got 12 packets were transmitted, 12 were received. Again, no packet loss, etc. This is nice when you don't want to clutter up your screen with a bunch of noise, basically responses. The next flag we're going to talk about is the dash F. The dash F forces ping to do a ping flood against our target. Again, the, uh, in order to stop it, we'll need to do a control C. But once we issue this command, it will send as many ICMP packets as it possibly can and do so until we actually stop it. As you'll notice, we're not getting really any detail uh, until we get the control C, which we'll do now. And we see that over 6,000 packets were sent in just a very short amount of time. Uh, 
this is good to see if the target system and the target network specifically will detect the activity or if it will consume the bandwidth or bring the system down. When we use the dash F, it does a ping flood, sending a lot of ICMP packets as quickly as it can. That's going to hopefully be detected by network intrusion detection systems. If we want to avoid detection, we can slow our ping down using the dash I flag. In this case, what I'll say is I'll give a number five, which indicates that I, between each ping that you send, I want you to delay five seconds. So we'll again, we'll target our hacker DMA disk. And we see the first packet was sent, but we're going to have to wait another five seconds before the next packet is sent. And it will continue to do this until we hit the control C, which we'll do now. So we notice three packets were sent and the time is obviously much larger than it was before. The next flag may seem a little strange at first, but once we show you, once we take a look at it, we'll see that uh, it can be used in some cases. The ping-l flag indicates that you want to send a certain number of packets as fast as it can possibly go and then return to normal. I'll do 20 packets and then we'll see what our results are and then we'll discuss why we would ever do something like this. We notice we have got a burst and now it's going through and sending it out normally. I'll do a control C. What we want to do when we use the dash L is to see if we can plug up bandwidth and then see how quickly it responds uh, as far as uh, uh, the server being able to um, get out of this quagmire of uh, too many packets. Sometimes when we're talking about small networks, the initial flood can create some serious problems in the network. And that's all we're really trying to do is see how the network and the server responds to a mass amount of pings and then try to see how quickly it resumes uh, its uh, normal operations. Ping can be used during the initial investigation to identify systems that are in a network. When we look at the man page for ping, we see that there's more options than just the simple ping and then an IP address using ICMP packets. It really is critical to understand the tools that you're using and all the options in order to be able to effectively target and identify systems.